Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will cover text fields, buttons, and how you can show snack bars in Jetpack Compose. So you can see this is what we will build here. We have a simple text field, a button, and if we enter our name here and click on this button, then it will just show a snack bar with hello and whatever name you entered. So let's jump right into Android Studio here. An empty Compose project as usual and well, how can we show snack bars here in Android Studio in Compose? A simple way would just be by using snack bar here. Import that. And in here we can set a text to that snack bar. Write hello Philip, for example. And if we launch that app, then check the emulator. You will see we have our snack bar here on top of our screen and it's permanently displaying. This is not how snack bars used to work when we had XML layouts because on the one hand they popped up at the bottom of our screen and on the other hand they disappeared after some delay. So this way of using your snack bar with this snack bar composable, you can use that if you really want to have the full control about, about your snack bar and you want to control for example how long it will stay, where it will stay on the screen. But if you just want a normal snack bar, as you already know it from Android, then we need to use what is called a scaffold, like this, uh, scaffold. So scaffold is just a layout in Compose, which will make it easy for us to include already existing material design components in Jetpack Compose. So with a scaffold, we can easily create a top bar, so just a toolbar for our app. We can easily create a navigation drawer, which we know from XML, but we can also just use it to display snack bars, just as we used to be. So on the one hand, I want to give that scaffold a modifier to just fill our whole screen. Modifier.fill max size, you already know that. But it also needs a different parameter here, which you don't know yet, and that is the so-called scaffold state. So in the previous video you have learned about state. It's just a value that can change over time in the end and that usually represents some part of our UI. And to actually be able to show a snack bar here within a scaffold, we need to assign a state to it. And then with that state, we can show that snack bar whenever we want. And we don't really need to create that state on our own. Instead, it is already included by Compose by default. So we can just use a val scaffold state here and set that to remember scaffold state and that will just give us the the default state for that scaffold and we can pass that here and then here within that scaffold I'll create a column because we want to have our text field and our button on top of each other for that column I will set the horizontal alignment to center horizontally so we can just center our items I will set the vertical arrangement to center as well and I'll set the modifier to fill max size. And I will also apply some padding in horizontal direction of 30 dp and input the dp here. So what comes next? Next comes our text field. Um, and for text fields, we have multiple options in Jetpack Compose, how we can um, create these, how we can style these. On the one hand, if you come from XML, then you know material design, just the normal material design uh, edit text in XML. We can use the same ones here in Compose as well. So that would on the one hand just be a normal text field here, which is the one that we will use here, um, which you've just seen uh, when I showed you the app. But you can see we could also use an outline text field that also comes from material design, which, well, is just outlined. And there is also a basic text field. This one has nothing to do with material design. So in case you want to design your very own text field, then you should use this basic text field. But if you want to stick to the material design guidelines, you should either use the outline text field or this text field. So these two from material design come with all the properties that you already know. Um, but this basic text field is really very basic. So in case you want to have a hint for that basic text field, then you have to program that functionality on your own. This doesn't come with a hint, for example. But it really allows you a lot of freedom here because, of course, you can just design your text field in a way that you like and you don't need to stick to those guidelines by Google. But I will choose a normal text field here 
and now we need to enter some parameters here. On the one hand, I don't know what it, why it does that. We don't want this lambda block and instead enter some parameters here for the text field. On the one hand, the value just represents the string that is visible in that text field. So the currently entered text. Well, we don't want to have a text by default because the user should enter that text. But what we should usually do here, and what you probably always do for text fields, is you will link this text field to a state. Because what will happen here with text fields is whenever that value of those text fields changes, whenever the user types something into that text field, we need to update a state variable which represents the string that is currently in that text field. So that is basically the way how other composables can get the input, the current text of that text field. So what we will do is I will scroll up here to our scaffold state and I will create another state which is our text field state which just represents the current text in that state. And in the last video about state you have learned that we can use this remember keyword, this one here, to just prevent that this value is reset on recomposition. So we can set this to immutable state of an empty string by default. Um, but there's actually a cooler way to use this remember keyword and that is using a Kotlin delegate. So we can make this a var and just in, instead of setting that equal to remember, we say by remember. And the advantage of this is, or the syntactical sugar here of this is, that this directly represents the value of the state. So that is a string now, while what we had before, if we press Control Q on that, you can see that is a mutable state of string. But if we use by, and by the way, scroll up to our imports, and replace this remember import just with an asterisk because for some reason it doesn't recognize to import that remember keyword here if we use that delegate. But anyways, if we do it like this and press Control Q, Q here, um, then you can see that this is directly the string that we're interested in. So we don't always need to write text field state dot value. Instead, we can directly use this and also change it because it's a var. And then we can now use that text field state and assign it here to our text field. We also need what is called a label. That is something you probably already know from material design. That is basically just the hint of our text field. So what is displayed when uh, there is no text in that text field or when we enter text, then this label basically jumps up to the top of that text field. And here we can just set that to a text. Um, and that is enter your name. And for some reason it gives us an error here. Um, let's just finish off with this text field first. Um, the, the function that's missing or the parameter is on value change, which is called whenever the text field's value changes, whenever the user enters something, enters a character basically. This function is called. And in that function, you can see it gives us the string, the, the new string. And with that string, we want to update our state. So we use our text field state and we can directly set it to it. And that will now just assign the state and it will recompose every composable that has something to do with that state. So those were the mandatory parameters here for the text field. What we also want to set here is single line to true. So we just have a single line. We can't enter multiple lines. And again, a modifier um, that just sets this to the max width. Then that is it for the text field. You, you can see we have a lot of possibilities here to um, change that, to style it. I won't go through all of these here because, well, this is a basic course about Compose. And anyways, I don't want to dive too deep into every single detail here because I don't think that's super interesting. It's rather interesting to know the basics and then just dive into a real project where you will learn a lot more about these details and how they actually applied in practice. What's missing is our button now. Um, I actually want to have a little space between our text field and our button. So we use a spacer, which you also already know, and set the modifier height to 16 dp. And then we will just create a normal button here. That is really nothing special, just a button we can click on. And when we click on it, we can set 
this on click listener, whatever we want to happen in that case. So here in this Lambda block, we can just put any composables that represent the content of this button, which is usually just a text, but you could put anything in here. And this should just say, please greet me. And well, when we now click on that button, we want the snack bar to pop up using this state, that text field state here, to just greet that specific person with that entered name. And we can do that now using our scaffold state. So sc scaffold state dot, you can see we have a snack bar host state and also a drawer state, which would be used to display a navigation drawer, but we're interested in the first one, snack bar host state. And using that, we can call dot show snack bar. And that just now works just the same way as the snack bar used to work. We can enter a message, an action label, and we can specify um, some kind of duration for that snack bar. We will just specify a message here that says hello and whatever we entered in our text field. So our text field state. And you can see we get an error here if we hover over this. It tells us it's a suspend function. So we need to execute that show snack bar function in a coroutine. Because, well, I think the reason why that is is that it just somehow needs a way to determine how long that snack bar shows until it basically disappears. And that's just very easily to do in a coroutine. So how can we actually get a coroutine scope here inside of a composable? That is luckily very easy. We just need to scroll up and use one more variable here, which is a val. I'll just call it scope and we can use remember coroutine scope. And that will just give us a coroutine scope that we can use within a composable like here. So then we just use scope.launch to launch a new coroutine within that scope. And then we put in our snack bar here. And if we then launch our app, that is actually everything we need to do here. Okay, we have our two composables here. That button is actually misaligned, doesn't really matter. We could change that if we would wrap it into a box and then set the box alignment to center end. So it would just stick to the end. But I think for this example, it doesn't matter. Let's just enter our name here and click on please greet me. And there is our snack bar. So it behaves as expected. So quick a little recap, what we did here, we used a scaffold, which is used to provide a layout that works well together with material design components, just as a navigation drawer, a toolbar, or a snack bar. And with that scaffold state that we assigned here, we can then easily show the snack bar later. And to display the snack bar, we use this text field state, which just represents the current text of our text field. As you can see, when the value changes, we reassign that state. And at the same time, we also update the value of the text field. So I hope that was understandable. If so, please let me know that below and also leave a like here. And if you're interested in more advanced Android premium courses, check out the first link in this video's description, which will lead you to my website. And these courses will bring your skills to the next level. Thanks for watching. I wish you an awesome day and I hope I see you in the next video again. Bye bye.